a boy behind barbed wire in war-torn France, a father lost to Auschwitz, and a mother struggling to keep him alive. That boy would grow into the greatest mathematical visionary of the century. He shattered old boundaries, rebuilt the language of mathematics, and then, at the peak of his power, walked away from it all. Genius, Rebellion, Exile. This is the extraordinary life of Alexander Grothendieck. Alexander Grothendieck was born in Berlin in 1928. His parents, Alexander Shapiro and Hanka Grothendieck, were anarchists, rebels against every form of authority. From the moment of his birth, his life was tied to resistance and instability. He entered the world in chaos, with danger already closing in. When the Nazis rose to power, his parents fled Germany. They found themselves in France, but instead of safety, they were placed in internment camps. Young Alexander was separated from his mother for long stretches. His childhood was already marked by fear, hunger and uncertainty. In 1942, his father, a Russian Jewish revolutionary, was captured. He was deported to Auschwitz, where he was murdered. Alexander, only 14, never saw him again. The loss marked him forever, leaving him with both grief and defiance. Alexander was hidden in the village of Le Chambon sur Lignon, a community that resisted Nazi occupation by sheltering Jewish children. Here, he survived the war years under constant threat. Books and scraps of paper became his escape. In the silence of hiding, his hunger for learning grew. By his late teens, Grothendieck was obsessed with geometry. With little guidance, he tried to rediscover the rules of mathematics on his own. He wanted to understand length, area and volume from first principles. His notebooks were filled with questions most students never thought to ask. At Montpellier University, he studied mathematics with almost no resources. He lacked formal training and access to advanced books. Yet he worked tirelessly, reinventing ideas that were already known, pushing himself through sheer willpower. His determination set him apart. Moving to Paris and then Nancy, Grothendieck finally met great mathematicians. Jean Dieudonné and Laurent Schwartz recognized his genius. They gave him the tools and language he needed. With their mentorship, his raw brilliance began to shine. In 1957, his Tohoku paper changed the landscape of modern mathematics. He introduced abelian categories, a bold new idea that reached far beyond what anyone expected. Colleagues were stunned by the depth of his vision. From the ashes of war, a new voice in mathematics was rising. In 1958, Grothendieck arrived at a brand new institute, ERS, just outside Paris. It was meant to rival the great centers of science. Here, he was given freedom few mathematicians ever had. And with that freedom, he began to imagine a new world of mathematics. Grothendieck transformed ERS into a living workshop of ideas. His seminars were relentless, stretching for hours, sometimes days. Young mathematicians came from all over the world to learn. They described it as both exhausting and exhilarating. Here, Grothendieck introduced his most radical idea, schemes. It was a new foundation that replaced the old geometry of curves and surfaces with something deeper. Suddenly, problems once thought impossible became approachable. It was nothing less than a new language for mathematics. He then created e cohomology, a powerful tool that connected geometry to number theory. 
With it, mathematicians could attack problems that had resisted for centuries. It stunned the community by offering a path toward the wild conjectures. The impossible was starting to look possible. Not stopping there, Grothendieck unveiled Topos theory. It linked geometry with logic in a way no one had imagined. To some, it was bewildering. To others, it was a universe of new possibilities. For Grothendieck, it was proof that mathematics had no limits. Grothendieck laid out the standard conjectures, bold predictions meant to guide future generations. They were roadmaps to an unfinished cathedral of ideas. Even today, many remain unsolved. It was as if he was pointing to the horizon, daring others to follow. In 1966, Grothendieck was awarded the Fields Medal, the highest honor in mathematics. But he refused to travel to Moscow in protest against the Soviet regime. Instead, he chose to give lectures in war-torn Hanoi during the Vietnam War. For him, moral conviction mattered more than prestige. By 1970, Grothendieck stood at the very peak of mathematics. He had rebuilt the field from its foundations. Every corner of modern algebraic geometry carried his mark. He had rebuilt the Cathedral of Mathematics from the ground up. As his mathematical fame grew, Grothendieck's conscience grew louder. He joined protests against nuclear weapons, warning of their danger to humanity. He denounced the Vietnam War with fiery speeches. To him, silence in the face of injustice was betrayal. In 1967, Grothendieck made a shocking choice. He traveled to North Vietnam during the war. As bombs fell, he delivered lectures on mathematics to students determined to learn. His presence was both dangerous and symbolic. He was teaching that knowledge could survive even under fire. Back at ERS, Grothendieck learned that part of the Institute's funding came from the military. To him, this was intolerable. He demanded that the ties be cut, clashing bitterly with colleagues and directors. The quiet halls of mathematics turned into a battlefield of principles. In 1970, Grothendieck resigned from ERS. The news stunned the global mathematics community. The most brilliant mind of his generation had walked away from the very center of his work. It was an act of rebellion that no one could have predicted. Grothendieck then poured his energy into activism. He founded Survivre et Vivre, Survive and Live, a group fighting against nuclear arms and environmental destruction. The group demanded a new way of life, one free from violence and greed. Grothendieck was no longer just a mathematician, he was a revolutionary voice. Even after leaving ERS, he continued to teach in France. At the same time, he wrote massive manuscripts, thousands upon thousands of pages. These works mixed mathematics, philosophy, and personal reflection. Few could follow his pace. His output was overwhelming. In 1988, Grothendieck was awarded the Crawford Prize, worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. He refused it. He claimed that prizes corrupted science and distorted truth. Once again, he shocked the world by rejecting what others craved. Not long after, Grothendieck left academia completely. He turned his back on the universities, the prizes, and the community he had built. He disappeared into the mountains to live in near isolation. The world's greatest mathematician walked away. After leaving academia, Grothendieck vanished into the Pyrenees. He cut off contact with most friends, colleagues, and even family. Few knew where he was or what he was doing. The great mathematician had turned into a hermit. In isolation, Grothendieck turned to spirituality. He searched for answers in religion, ecology, and the mysteries of existence. He lived simply, often growing his own food and rejecting modern comforts. Mathematics was no longer his only universe. 
he wrote endlessly, most famously, Recolte et Semai, a massive work mixing philosophy, memoir, and accusation. In it, he criticized the community he once led. He accused colleagues of distorting his vision and stealing his ideas. It was both confession and attack, a book unlike any other. In 2010, he sent a strange letter to libraries and publishers. He demanded that none of his works be reprinted or shared. He wanted his writings to vanish with him. The world was stunned. How could a man who created so much want it all hidden? Even as Grothendieck retreated, his students and colleagues carried his vision forward. Mathematicians like Pierre de Ligne expanded on his foundations, proving results he once dreamed of. His concepts became tools for solving problems far beyond geometry. His influence only grew stronger. As the years passed, Grothendieck became a living mystery. Journalists and admirers searched for him, but he avoided them all. Rumors spread about his strange habits and hidden life. He was both a legend and a ghost. In 2014, Alexander Grothendieck died alone in the Pyrenees. The news spread across the world, shaking the scientific community. Tributes poured in from every continent, honoring his unmatched genius. The man who lived in silence left behind an unshakable legacy. After his death, a treasure was discovered, thousands of unpublished pages known as the Fons Grothendieck. Hidden for decades, these writings revealed the depth of his unfinished ideas. Even in silence, his mathematics reshaped the world.